Hey, we want to welcome you to tonight's sacred assembly. Here at the York Church tonight, we're gathering together to pray for Israel and for the United States. Many things are taking place, I'm going to share that later, but we always want to come together to worship God. And then I'm going to share a very short message here this evening, and then we're going to go to prayer. And we have 12 mighty men that are all going to pray before God here tonight. And then we're going to have a, a time of prayer uh, with everybody else here in this. And then we're going to ask that God would do something. He said for Sodom and Gomorrah, for 10 righteous, he wouldn't destroy them. I believe that we can activate the promises of God when we pray. And I'm praying that God will come alongside and a reprieve could happen. I don't know how much you believe that God can change, but if you haven't listened to the story of the book of Jonah, read it again. They had 40 days and they were going to be destroyed. And God spared them because people repented. Would you stand with me? We're going to go into worship. And Father, as we go into worship tonight, pour out your spirit, your anointing upon all. All those that are watching by line and all those that are here tonight. May the mighty hand of God sense the hearts of men and women tonight as we seek you in this sacred assembly. seated as we continue in this sacred assembly together God gave me this word last night I was actually in bed but I was still reading what was happening in Israel and then I was starting to watch our media reports and I noticed how they kept on saying Iran is retaliating against Israel I'm thinking wait a minute Israel didn't attack Iran and Yes, they did bomb an area in Syria where all the, the weaponry were just getting a few miles north of them, and two of Iran's generals were there. And so here's what you may not know, but it has now been factually true, proven in this, is that 
Iran contacted Turkey and asked Turkey to contact the United States and say, here's what Iran is going to do. Turkey would tell the United States what Iran was going to do. And they said, we want you to know we don't want you to retaliate against Iran. Don't support Israel to retaliate against Iran when Iran attacks them for killing the two generals in Syria. Now, the news channels didn't report all that. They just reported that it was Iran now getting back for what Israel had done to them. Such false reporting. As I laid there in bed, God said, get up, I want to talk to you. So I got up and I went downstairs and I contacted all our staff and our IT people and I said, we need to hold a sacred assembly and gather together. And I wanted to share with you the scripture that God gave me in this. And as I was going through it, he said, do you see the birth pains? How many have happened within this one week? And I'm going to share them with you again in just a moment. But this is the scripture. It's found in Romans chapter 13. It's not going to be up on a screen. I'm sharing from my heart here tonight. We're not trying to do a service. We're trying to be obedient to the Lord. But in Romans chapter 13, verse 11 and 12, listen to what it says. And do this, knowing the time. Do we know what the time is? That now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now, our salvation is nearer than we, when we first believe. I believe we all know that's true. Our salvation is nearer. That means Jesus is close to coming back for his church. Listen to verse 12. The night is far spent. Let us cast off, oh, sorry, the night is far spent, the day is at hand. When you see the phrase, the day it is at hand, it immediately goes, the first prophet to coin the day of the Lord was the prophet Joel. And all those started using it. Joel did it in like 850 BC, 850 years before Jesus came back. And by the time you get to the New Testament, when people say that the day is at hand, they all knew they were talking about the day of the Lord. So when it says here in verse 12 that the day is at hand, therefore let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let me tell you, the darkness in our media, the darkness in our government, and the darkness in our world could cause the hand of God to come very strong and quickly upon the United States. We learned as little kids, and most of our leaders should know this also, if you bless Israel, you'll be blessed. If you curse Israel, you'll be cursed. God gave that to Abraham. He said, those that will bless you will be blessed, and those will curse you will be cursed. Let me tell you, we told Israel after hundreds of drones and over 150 ballistic missiles mostly got caught outside of the boundaries of Israel, but some made it into Israel, and over Jerusalem, some were destroyed over the capital of Jerusalem. Could you imagine that a foreign country would send missiles over the capital of the Washington, D.C., and that another country could tell us, do not retaliate, stand down? It wouldn't fly, would it? And so this is where we're at as a nation tonight with the nation of Israel. But God knew this day was coming. The Bible foretold it in Ezekiel chapter 38. It says that Israel will go to war against certain nations and some of the key nations. Remember, who's taking the information from Iran is Turkey. It's named in Ezekiel 38. So is Iran. Up to this point, it's been the Iranian proxies in Yemen, in Lebanon, and in Gaza. These have been their proxies, the terrorists that have been doing the work on behalf. They're the people that Iran has hired. And now Iran itself has said, we're coming against. And their whole motto is this, the death of Israel and America. How interesting that we would take a message then through Turkey about not attacking Iran when they would attack the only democracy there in the Middle East that have been, since God brought them back in 1948, 
our best friends and allies in the Middle East. Here's what God fulfilled in a short one week time. And again, it says the day is at, is at hand. And do you know what time it is? Is Ezekiel 38 now activated? We can't know yet for sure. There's some things that have to happen. But on April 8th, when God had allowed a second eclipse in seven years to cross the United States, it was a fulfillment of the end of Ezekiel chapter 37. If you haven't read the end of Ezekiel chapter 37, it's about two sticks. The first stick, the first eclipse represented the first stick of Judah. It went through so many cities called Salem, which was the old name for the capital of Jerusalem, which is the southern kingdom, Judah. That was seven years ago. In this second eclipse that came through, in Ezekiel chapter 37, it says the second stick is Ephraim. Now, if you don't remember what happened, when Jacob goes to bless his grandchildren, Manasseh is the oldest. Ephraim is the youngest. Manasseh is on Jacob's right. Ephraim's on the left. Jake, or Ephraim's on the left. Jacob takes his right hand and places it on Ephraim and makes an X and crosses over and puts his left hand on Manasseh. And everybody's trying. Joseph is saying, uh, you got it wrong. You, 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 no, I don't. And many scholars believe that the tribe of Ephraim, most of them live in the United States, over 6 million Jews. In Ezekiel 37, it says, when you see the two sticks come together, it's a message to the Jew that's been born outside. Ephraim was born in Egypt. The X actually happened over a town. The seven-year X of the two eclipses happened over a town called Little Egypt. You can look it up from NASA. And so it's for those Jews that were born outside of the United States to come home. That happened on Monday, the X took place. Here, before the week is out, Iran sends the drones and the missiles into Israel. This is the major country that is coming against them in Ezekiel 38. So on Monday, Ezekiel 37, the sign from the heavens is there. By Saturday night here in America, Israel is being attacked by a major country, Iran, that has communicated through Turkey, which is one of the nations mentioned in Ezekiel 38, to the United States not to, at to attack Iran in this time. And so for the first time in Israel's history of being back since 1948, America will not stand and go fight with Israel when they go to attack Iran. And Benjamin Netanyahu said, let me tell you, there's no country that would have the bombs sent to their country and not retaliate when the motto of the country that attacked them says, death to Israel. They're going to attack. We don't know. It could be happening as we're speaking. We get home, you go, oh, it's happening right now. It's going to happen fairly quick. For the first time, Israel says they cannot share when or the locations that they're going to attack with the United States because they can't trust that they wouldn't tell Iran. Now, this, why do I go into such detail of this? In Ezekiel 38, it says that Israel, when this war happens, where Iran and Turkey with uh, Lebanon and Syria and Yemen and Libya, these countries are all going to come together. There's another major country that came into play early our morning this morning and whatever it was time over in Russia. Russia sent out a decree along Putin got on his national airwaves and said, if anyone attacks Iran, they are our ally, just like America has NATO and Europe as their allies. And if someone attacks Europe, the United States gets involved. Anybody attacks Iran, Russia will be involved. That is the major country that is also named, that the Rosh in Ezekiel 38, when you read it, is Russia. Russia and Iran, the players are all in place. Turkey's playing the go-between right now. 
they're actually part of NATO, but they haven't acted like it in years. All the players are in place. Is this gonna happen? Only time will tell, but listen to the sequence when it says the birth pains are coming closer and closer. We had the signs from the heavens on Monday. We have an attack by the, one of the major countries in Ezekiel 38, Iran. We have then Turkey it, finding out that they're not playing the role of a real NATO friend, they're playing a role of Iran's friend. And then before the evening's over, over there, Russia is declaring they are the ally. Solar eclipse, attack on Iran. Turkey being a, a role in this. And Russia declaring that is their, their ally and they will defend Iran. That's four things within Ezekiel 37 and 38 in a one week's time. We've only had three major things since counting the birth of Israel itself in 1948. To have four in a week, the ladies would tell you that the birth pains are now happening at a very rapid frequency. This means the church should be aware. What's our role? First off, could it all settle down? That's what we're praying for, that there's a reprieve, that a revival will happen. But America has to change its heart. I don't know under this administration if that's even possible. They have done this m with Gaza. Now they're doing it with ballistic missiles going into Israel saying, stand down. We need to pray that God's will is done. He hears from heaven and he says, if we will pray. So in just a few moments, we're gonna have 12 mighty men that are gonna go through their prayer time up here right here at this table, and they're gonna be praying on your behalf and my behalf and all of our behalfs and for our country and for Israel. I just ask them to be unified in one thing and then they are to pray what God lays on their heart. When they're praying, would you pray online? Would you pray here alongside them too here tonight? The sacred assembly is we're here to be with God because God can bring all things together for good. By the way, since it says the day is at hand, if you go back to Joel chapter 1, you'll see that it says, and a foreign country invades Israel. You go, oh, they were talking about a different invasion then. There are parallels that happen. The day of the Lord was birthed out of invasions in the land of Israel. And Joel recorded that, not only for that time, but he gave things that didn't happen during his day and time that many eschatologists believe are reserved for today. It, are we at the door? Is this the day of, of the hand of the Lord? God will show us soon, but our role is to pray and ask him to help. I'm gonna ask our associate pastor to lead the mighty men here as he comes up and starts our prayer time. Amen. And the theme also for all the mighty men to share is from Joshua chapter 24. And it reads like this. Now, therefore, the fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which his fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve the Lord. And if it seem evil to you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, the gods of the Amorites in whom land you dwell, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. During those three epochs, those three uh, eras, the flood, Egypt, and then in the land of Canaan during prosperity, there was the temptation to serve the gods of th that particular land. But he says, Joshua says, and he commands them to serve the Lord, their God. And that's what we're going to do when we go to prayer. We're going to commit ourselves to serving the Lord during these tumultuous times, especially during these last days. Amen. Father, right now, we just come into your presence. Lord, knowing that, as Proverbs says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are saved. Lord, right now, even though the days are evil and the signs are all around us, Lord, 
Father, we're praying for reprieve, as Pastor said. We're praying for a stay of execution of your judgment on this land, Lord, and the world, and on your people. And we thank you that we can call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you hear us, Lord. And your people, as we saw, Lord, in the book of Genesis, where Abraham prayed, Lord, for Lot, and he prayed for Sodom and Gomorrah, Lord, and you were willing to stay back the hand of judgment, Lord, because of your, your long-suffering, your loving kindness, your mercy. Lord, we appeal to that today, Lord, that you would give us a reprieve and a stay of execution, again, of your judgment that is so deserving on this country and also on this world. But we pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would manifest those wonderful attributes that we've come to know as your children. Lord, we just ask you, Father, in a very sincere and a very diligent way, Father, to give us that reprieve. And Lord, in the meantime, put your hand upon your people Israel and upon your church, Lord, here in the United States and throughout the world, those that name the name of Christ. Lord, we thank you. We love you. We praise you. We commit ourselves to you. We commit ourselves, Lord, to your will. We humble ourselves. We, 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 we just surrender everything that we are to you and to your will, Lord, to see that hand of, of judgment, Lord, stayed, that more people would come to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ in these dangerous and last days. Father, we thank you. We give you the praise. We give you the glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Because my house is the Lord's house, and the Lord's house is my house. You were here in the beginning, and you have been here ever since. You have always been with us when we honored you and when we dishonored you, when we served you and when we turned away from you, in our good times and in our desperate times. You have been there, and you have always provided. Great is your faithfulness. Again today, we face desperate times. Evil is rising, and as always, evil rises against you. We here tonight choose to rise with you. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Israel who face that rising evil. We want them to know that they will not face that evil alone. We know that when you touch Israel, you touch the apple of God's eye. We know that you, Lord, are the keeper of Israel and that you neither slumber nor sleep. And we know that you bless those who bless Israel and you curse those who curse Israel. It is our prayer tonight that you rise to strike down evil and those who commit it. It is our prayer that we too will never slumber nor sleep when it comes to defending the apple of your eye. It is our prayer that you bless us, that we may bless Israel and you. It is our commitment that we rise with you in this crusade against evil. We pray this in the name of your Son, our Savior, our Lord, and our God, Jesus Christ. Amen. I was telling Pastor this morning that next to my bed at, uh, at my home, I've had a plaque on the wall for years and years and years, and it states... For me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And, and I truly, truly mean that, you know, and I pray that all the time, you know, for my children and my grandchildren. And my wife and I uh, are steadfast in that belief. Lord God, we uh, just ask you uh, this evening, Lord, to uh, touch in a mighty way, Lord God, uh, the situation uh, in Israel. Lord God, your chosen people. And we would pray, Jesus, that you would uh, touch them in a special way today. 
and guide them and direct them in the things that uh, will be done, Lord God, in your will. Because uh, you have fought all their battles throughout time. And Lord God, it's not their might, but your might. And Lord, we just pray that uh, if possible, you would give us a little stay, as Paul said, Lord, and give us a little bit more time. But you know, it, Lord, it's your time. Whatever you want to do, you will do it. And we just want to tell you that we love and, and honor you, Lord, uh, for anything that you do. And we just pray, Jesus, that you would, uh, again, touch this service. We thank you for touching our pastor and laying upon his heart, Lord, to uh, have a special service that we can praise you this evening and that we could uh, honor you, Lord God, by asking you to bless Israel. And uh, whatever means that uh, may happen, Lord God, over there, we know that, uh, Lord, we're behind you and we're behind Israel in every way that we can. And we just thank you for your blessings and your holiness tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, as for me and my house, we will serve you. We come to you as simple people. Uh, we come with open arms and open hearts and open minds as to your will. We know that there is nothing out of your vision, nothing out of your understanding, and most importantly, nothing out of your power. We ask that you be with this church, with all our families, with our leadership locally, um, regionally, and um, nationally to understand that we owe it to Israel to stand with them. I ask that you work on the hearts of those that think that they don't need you. There are so many in this country that feel that way. That you give them an understanding that you are the only God to be served. Not the simple things or the the glitzy things or the things that will fall away. I ask that however we can help you and however we can help Israel, that's what we do. If it's pray, we continue to do that. If it's fight, we'll fight on our knees, we'll fight on our feet, we'll fight in the streets. We need to show, as the greatest nation in the world that was founded upon you and on the freedom to worship you, that, that we will be steadfast, that we will do whatever it takes, and we will, again, um, be those people that don't necessarily have to feed the multitudes, but we will be the carriers of the fishes and the loaves. You are all powerful, and we ask that if it is your will, and however your will works, that you, um, you keep, keep Israel safe, the people of Israel safe, and the innocents that will be affected in this conflict safe. Um, there are always innocents in war that die, but if they've got coverage by you, that, that death is very minimal compared to everlasting life with you. So, all of these things we ask in the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. My name is Jonathan. Yeah, and I also, Mike, have that uh, in our front entryway. When you come in our house, you see it right there in the window at the front door. So as for me and my house, we will serve you, Lord. We pray tonight in Jesus' name to thank you for our victory and to ask for your protection over Israel right now. We ask for your protection over all God's children during these crazy and turbulent times. We ask for revival and a great awakening that will bring all Christians out to vote for the candidates who stand in line with your wishes and your will, please, Lord. 
Thank you for keeping us on your path, doing your will. Amen. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. <clears throat> I'm going to hold it for you. All right. You read it. I'll hold it. No, I'm not reading it. Um, because uh, of Christ, um, our house is saved. Uh, because I had asked God for a heart for souls, I had led my in-laws to Christ and many others and I just pray for the peace of for the peace of Israel for protection for um, for those around the other countries like Iran and who are Christians for their protection and uh, the other nations around, that are surrounding Israel for their protection and I, I just pray for peace for and and for our government that they would uh, wake up and and uh, come back to Christ and 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 obey the laws of God again in the name of Jesus. Thank you. That's the first half of the the six that are here, and as you can see, some of these are are board members, former board members, staff members. Some of them are security. The last one here. Richard is one of our our newest here that uh, joined the family here, and uh, I'm so glad that when we were asking for men that would volunteer to pray, he raised his hand and came forward. Thank you, Richard. We go from you, Richard, to the second half, and we start with the youngest man that volunteered here today, and he comes up here as one of our teens here, Zach Olson. Thank you. Hello, guys. As for me and my life, Lord, I will serve you. Lord, I pray for the salvation of Israel and the protection of Israel, Lord. Please protect them, Lord. Be with the children and the families, Lord. We know what your word says. Whoever curses Israel, you will curse. Whoever blesses Israel, you will bless. Lord, let us not only pray for them tonight, but continue to pray for them every single day. And um, be reminded of that. Lord, not only Israel, Lord, but please, Lord, let America turn back to you. We have sinned greatly against you, Lord. Let us turn back to you before it's too late, Lord. Please remind America, Lord, that hell is real, and if, if we don't turn back to you before it's too late, then it's not going to be good. But, Lord, let us be obedient to you by sharing the gospel to them, despite the hate we might get for it just like an ax. Um, Lord, we see the Bible prophecies being fulfilled. We know your word is true, Lord, so let us be well versed in it. Let us memorize your word and let us live out your word every day. Lord, thank you for everyone here today. Um, we love you and we thank you. And please, Lord, just help us every single day be obedient to you, follow your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And now, uh, come on up, Arnold. Arnold, you're from the Bikers Group. I didn't share where everybody is from, but you're one of the newbies to us here for a while. And, and uh, I was blessed when you, just like Richard, raised his hand and Zach said that they would be here. I'm glad that you are a part of it. Some of them have been in our church for decades, and I'm glad you have a friendship that goes way back in our church here. Thank you for being one of the men that would stand in the gap here tonight and praying. Amen. Thank you. For me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I'm going to get on my knees and come before the Lord tonight. Father, I just humbly come before your throne of grace tonight, Father. And I'd ask, Lord, that you would search my heart and our hearts, Father, that be anything that would... Uh, be not right, Lord God, that we would just ask for your forgiveness, Lord, that our prayers would not go un unanswered, Lord God. And with our prayers and petitions tonight, Father, I pray for the peace of Israel tonight, Lord God. I pray that you'd give the gen generals 
in the government divine wisdom and insight in making good sound decisions and choices for the nation of Israel, Father. I pray for the IDF soldier and the, on the battlefield, Lord, that you would give them divine wisdom and favor and protection. The pilots that are flying, give them protection and divine directions, Lord God. I pray for the innocent victim of war over there, Father, that you would protect them, Father. And I pray, Lord, that this would come to an end, even though it's, we know that you plan everything in advance. It's already, you already know what's going to happen there, Father. But we just stand in the gap for your people, Father, and I just lift up our government, the strong, the headlock of the enemy that's got on, that's on our government. I pray it be loosed in the mighty name of Jesus, Father. I pray you would deliver us from this rotten old enemy that has a stronghold on our schools and our government. Father, we just ask for that you would just intervene, Father, on your children's behalf, Father. I pray for the children, Lord God. I pray for our children, Lord. I pray for our nation, Lord God, that you would forgive us, Father. I pray for all the, the body of Christ, Lord, that you would stir us up in our heart, Father. Lord, for the lost and for those that don't know you, Father, that you would put it in our heart, Father, have a broken heart for the unsaved people, Lord God, that we would be a witness, Father, by our actions and by our words wherever we go, Father, that we might be able to tell someone about you, Father, if it's with a smile or with a track or just... Father, you'd give us that opportunity. you put it in our heart, Father, for divine appointments. That's what we ask for. You're a God of, of love and mercy, and so we just ask that be continued to be given to us, Lord God, for our rottenness, Lord, that we just thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Father, for undeserving as we are, we don't deserve anything, Father. For this, the world looks for war. We look for the bride to come back, Father, and that we would all be prepared. I would pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I'm going to come down here as my longest term person that I, one of the first people that I met. I'm going to let, let you turn around and pray right here. Oh, thanks. When I came to the church over 13 plus years ago, my next door neighbor were Brad and Diane. Bradley, I remember you weren't going to church, and if, I remember when Mindy invited you. Yep. You said the church roof would fall in if I came to the church. And I, I remember it didn't fall in. We did have to replace the roof. It, it leaked a lot. That's a start. <laughs> but that was 13 years ago. Diane, with all her hospitalizations, you guys go sometimes right from the hospital, come here to church. And when you raised your hand this morning, Mindy's at home watching it in line right now with so many others. She said, oh, tell Brad, what a wonderful day it is that Brad says he's going to stand with God and with the church and to pray here tonight. Bradley Hamill, I love you. Here's, here's your chance to come before the Lord. Well, I didn't expect that, but thank you. Yes, and for me and my house, we will serve and praise the Lord. And Lord, I'm not much, but I'm all I got. And thank you for everything you've given us. Thank you for your salvation, your love, your mercy. We ask that you would enter the chambers of our country and straighten out those people that don't care, that don't love, and that don't care for you. We ask that you would cast your hand upon Israel and bring the peace and tranquility, and let us all live together in, on this, in this world in peace and love for you, Jesus our Lord. And I ask this sincerely in thy name. Amen. Thank you, my friend. Come on up, Paul. Follow me on up here, my friend. <laughs> You're probably the tallest man standing for Jesus tonight. <laughs> I love our conversations, too. You're one of the long-terms like the others here on this side over here are more of the long-termers, and you happen to be on this side over here. Thank you for your love for the kingdom and for your church and, and for being a, a prayer warrior here tonight. 
Well, I appreciate and love you too, Pastor. You've just been so tremendous for my life. As for me and my house, I will serve and stand with the Lord. We're in, his, we're in historic and prophetic times, aren't we? Yes. My goodness. And we gather to look to the Lord today for strength, but also to encourage each other as a body. That's always a, that's a big, beautiful part of coming to church. I'll tell you, we just stuff rubs off on each other, and, and we see how the Lord's working in our lives, and, and we have friendship, and we have love. It's just great. That's a, that's a growing thing. Lord, your word says they will hate you because of my name. That's God's statement to his people, the Hebrews in Canaan or the promised land. Now, the Jews in Israel. And in a larger sense, to all believers, Christians. Hatred has been a theme most of Jewish history. 2,000 years of diaspora or the scattering around the world after 70 AD. The regathering and the coming together as a nation of Israel in 1948, the hatred continues. Surrounded by nations that hate them still, and the pot's boiling ever more so lately, we stand on the watchtower. If Israel can't do it, let us have faith like Moses who, when the Egyptian army was coming in hot pursuit to Israel's dead end along the fork of the Red Sea, Moses cried out, Stand firm and watch the hand of the Lord. What faith, my goodness. Israel is still the apple of your eye. Lord, help us stand firm in all things with you. Amen. Number 11, one of our ones that's been here for several years, came during the pandemic and uh, been working with our teens and our security. I'm excited that down front here, those two young guys down there, they're your boys. They're watching Dad take a stand tonight. I'm sorry that I didn't take time to talk about Lawrence and Mike and Dana and Jonathan here and that you guys have been around and been steadfast for so long. Most of our people know you, maybe those not online, for the stance that men are taking. God spoke to me last night and said, okay, we're not excluding women here tonight, but we need, it's the hour when war is on, women are going, where's the security? It's in mighty men that serve God and mighty women that will pray and cry out to God too. And I wanted you to see the mighty men. Here's one of one of my favorites right here too. Thank you. I'm going to draw my brother from my knees. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And I repent to you, Father, that I have, I have not always been a faithful servant. But I praise you and I thank you for your forgiveness. Father, like we hear the rain fall from the heavens outside, I thank you for uh, Pastor O'Connor and Pastor Paul and for their leadership. Because, like Isaiah says, the rain is the word of God. Father, and it brings a harvest as it falls upon the land and your word brings a harvest as it falls upon people's hearts and minds. Oh, Father, may we grow to love the rain, the rain of your word, the word of God. And thank you for our leaders here at this church who continue to rain upon our souls as we come in here and listen to them Sunday after Sunday. Father, I repent, Lord, that um, of my, how I fall short in my home as a father, and most importantly as a husband. I repent, Father, and ask God that you would help me to continue to guide my children and to love my wife as you love the church. It seems like an impossible command from you to me as a, as a husband. But through your spirit, Father, I'm counting on you, Lord, to bring that about. 
that I pray that our family would serve you in this fashion and for the others in this congregation as well to do that as I lift up the husbands here now. For my heart is your home and you died on the cross to ensure of that, that you are king inside my heart as my will bows to you, Father. Father, I want to take this time to pray for the people in this church that they may continue to put on the belt of truth, Lord. Because in this day of confusion and counterfeits and lies and buffoonery and, and uh, bamboozlers in plenty out there, we will not be tricked if we have the belt of truth around our waist, which is your word. I ask that you continue uh, to, do, to give uh, the people of this church a passion for the truth. Father, I also come before you and pray that you would remember that you promised Abraham, Lord, that his descendants would be as numerous as the stars in the sky, and that promise is still being fulfilled, Father. And I thank you for your great work that despite all the rebellious doubt in, in Jerusalem and in the nation of Israel right now, that you are yet still working in the hearts of Messianic Jews and even non-believing Jews, that you have chosen a remnant, Father, that one day, Lord, they will be saved when they hear the gospel preached by the two witnesses you, have, you speak about in Revelation and thousands upon thousands of Jewish people whom we could never have imagined will put their faith in the Messiah. And I know you don't need me to remind you, Heavenly Father, of your promises to your people, but you want to hear us. You want this right here, right now, as Pastor O'Connor's called for this prayer time, because you desire this intimacy with us. You desire us to know you, Father, and to spend time with you in prayer and on our knees, Father. So I, I thank you that you look upon us with your favor and that you hold us in your arms, Lord, like your beloved children. So, Father, because you will remember your, your people, the Jews, in this time, I ask, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, by the authority that you, that you took when you ascended to heaven and sat at the right hand of the Father, I ask you would release the hounds of heaven. I ask you would release the angels, Lord, that you have apportioned to each believer and each future believer to intercede when bombs and drones and missiles are being dropped upon the nation of Israel or blocked or I pray, God, that your angels would be there to intercept them, Father. I pray that you would send the armies of heaven to protect the nation of Israel for they have endured hell for so much of history, of human history, Father. Now I pray, God, slowly you would move him towards the new heavens and the new, and the new, and the new Jerusalem, Father. Father, I want to pray for this upcoming presidential election. I, as a humble American, want to rebuke corruption in the election process. I pray, God, that you would also send your angels to Fight that, Father, so that um, you will elect who you want as president because it is true, Lord, that, that, uh, that the president is the strongest man on, on the planet, president of the United States. So I pray, God, through your sovereign power that you would put uh, the president that you want, Lord, uh, um, in, in authority, Lord, come 2000, November 2024. Father, I want to lift all this up, and I pray, God, that you would hear these prayers um, for our benefit, yes, but for your name's sake, Father. For the glory of the Lord Jesus, I pray, and in his name, amen.
as our last person, prayer person comes up, David, I want to ask our praise team to come up to close us in a song here in just a moment. And uh, David Araya, we appreciate you and love you. Your Sunday school class is one of the fastest growing Sunday school class I've ever seen in my life. I'm glad God is using you and that you're going to lead us in prayer as our anchor tonight. Thank you, Pastor. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Por mí y mi casa serviremos al Señor. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you are the beginning and the end. You have taken our, our heart of stone and given us a heart of flesh. You have asked us that we are to ask for forgiveness. Otherwise, our prayers will not be heard. Let's come to you, O oh Father, with an open heart. Let the scales of sin be fall apart, fall away from us, from our sinful ways. We raise our voices together as men and women and children to ask for your people, our people, because you love us just the same. You have said that our prayers are raised up in a sweet smelling aroma. Lord, may they reach the heavens and pass that to you, O oh Father. You are true, and you gave us peace of mind and heart and soul. Let us change our ways, O oh Lord. Forgive us, because we fall short. Let us follow your word, the light on our path. We know that you are the high tower, and we stand here and we come before you as you have commanded us to do so, to walk into the throne of grace. What a privilege that is, O oh Lord, that we can put claim to the things that, uh, that we're asking. All those things that have been said, that have been prayed to you, my Lord, my Savior, my Master. Let us be obedient. Let us be obedient to you and to come before you, O oh Lord. We place them, place them at your altar. Protect us. Your promises are true. That is what you say, and that is what you do. Protect us, O oh Father. Protect the people all the way across the pond, so far away, but they are just in danger today, O oh Lord. May your hand come upon them and you manifest your power in our lives and theirs. We thank you because we can come to you and your righteousness is ours only through the blood of Christ that paid the price that we are unable to do so. We thank you for your son Jesus that died on the cross for us. Blessed be the, your name in the highest. I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Would you stand with me? And in this final time of worshiping God, and I'm going to ask Pastor Rick that he'll close our time in prayer after this song. I want to tweak your vision just for a moment. For God so loved the world. There are Christians and people that love God in Iran, in Syria, in Lebanon, in Yemen, in Russia. One of the youngest gals that I would meet when I go to VBS would be a gal, Linda Russell, in the sixth grade. She gave her whole entire adult life to being a missionary in Moscow, serving a people, and many have come to Jesus. We put nations' names on it, and there's faces behind all these. And we're called by Christ to love our enemies. And some of those that when we put the enemy tag on a nation, we forget that in that nation, there are Christians that are being persecuted and Christians that need to be prayed for. We're to love the whole world, even our enemies, that some might come to know Jesus Christ. So as we worship him and as Rick closes in prayer, remember, we're a people that have a worldview and we don't hate anybody. We hate sin and we hate evil, and we pray that God will restore our world. He's going to do it one day soon. Let's worship him, church.
Amen. They don't have the song back there, but it's I exalt thee. You all know it. Let's lift our voices and exalt him above everything in this earth. Amen. I exalt thee. sung at the little church where I was saved at an altar of prayer. And it reminded me just how powerful it can be when somebody can stare into the eye of a storm, especially a man of God who will stand for his household and won't back down, goes beyond politics and says, I will stand with you, Father God, because you hold all truth. You are the word of truth, and I can stand on that, and I can hold fast in my home and show my kids and my spouse that I don't have to base things on my performance or anything like that. I can hold fast in that mighty storm, no matter how it will be around it, no matter what comes into my family, whether it's physical or financial, whether it's political around me, things wars and rumors of wars, whatever it be, the only thing I really need to fear is you, the fear of God. When we fear you, Lord, all the other stuff falls away. And you reminded me of that little song, and it even applies to, to Israel tonight, too. It just so blessed my heart. It just simply said, till the storm passes over, Till the thunder sounds no more. 
Till the clouds roll forever from the sky. Hold me fast. Let me stand in the hollow of thy hand. That's where we want to be, Lord. Keep me safe. Keep them safe. Keep us safe till the storm passes by. You're not worried about the storm, Lord. You even talked us, talk, told us in your word what the storm would be, what it would look like, what the season would be. As it happens, it just reminds me how powerful God I really serve. And as we pray tonight, how much weight that carries. And that these, praise you, these prayers you will store up forever. Every word that's been uttered comes straight from the heart. And in those storms, you will be reminded that we came to you at this time in Israel's storm crying out for your people and we're your people too. Thank you for loving your people. Thank you for holding us fast. And thank you, Lord, for giving us the foundation in the men of these church. This is a turning point tonight to see these gentlemen stand for you and your word in their household. We give you praise and honor and glory because it's yours. You make the difference. You calm the storm and you walk us in the midst of the storm when the storm never calms. We love you. We honor you. We bless your name. Surround your children in Israel, we pray tonight, with your care and your people in this congregation too, your family. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.